Good morning everyone. This is my first video I am uploading. Hi guys. I am a RSO in a nuclear medicine department. There are some questions which will help coming students of radiation field to clear RSO exam and some knowledge about what a RSO should know. So here we start from the first question. First one is that the activity of technetium 99M at the time of disposal in lead dustbin was 0.5 millicurie. What is the activity after 10 days when it was sent for disposal along with general non-radioactive waste? We know we'll apply the equation A is equal to A naught E minus lambda T. We'll have to find out what is that A. The A is that of final activity. We know the initial activity that is 0.5 millicurie. We know the half lifetime of the technetium 99M radioisotope that is 6 hours and we have given the elapsed time t that is 10 days we will convert it into hours and by using the formula a is equal to a naught e minus lambda t we will find out the answer so sorry guys there is no no answer is given in this in these four options the answer exact answer is 0.0045 microcurie so you can calculate you can find out the answer and you can comment below now the second one is iodine 131 decays mainly by dash process we know iodine 131 decays by two processes that are beta minus decay and the gamma decay but mainly it decays by beta minus decay the third one is the short-lived beta plus emitting radionuclides are produced by generators reactors accelerators cyclotrons and fission products we know in pet we use f18 that is the main short-lived beta plus emitting radionuclides and we all know that f18 is produced in the cyclotron the old short-lived beta emitting radionuclides like o15 n13 c11 these all are produced by cyclotrons so the exact answer is c accelerators or cyclotrons now the personal monitoring is done to measure the equivalent dose that is the mean equivalent dose. Dose rate meter will measure dose rate meters are those which we will use in our surveys. The main dose rate meters that are ionization chambers and GM counters which are mainly used in our department and the dose rate meter will give us the exposure rate. For estimating the alpha contamination, that detection detector is generally used. For especially for the alpha contamination, a special kind of detector is used that is ZNS, ZNS detector, zinc sulfide detector. Now the seventh one, for measurement of internal exposure due to radionuclide, following method is not used. We know for calculation of internal exposure, bioassay is done. Whole body scan can be used to measure the internal exposure. Thyroid counting is, can also be used to measure the internal exposure, but area monitoring, area monitoring is specially used to measure the external exposure. We cannot measure internal exposure using area monitoring. So the exact answer is area monitoring. Now the eighth one. Gamma energy of iodine 123 is 159 kV, we all know. Ninth one, for a high radiation field, which detector is generally preferred? We know in our departments, mainly two type of detectors are used that are ionization chambers and the GM counter. But for the high radiation field, ionization chamber is used. We cannot measure the high radiation field using GM counter. GM detector is used when now only counts we can uh, determine the counts using GM detector but energy cannot be determined using GM detector as we all know in GM we avalanche is formed so energy is elapsed in these detectors so energy cannot be determined also note the type of radiation we can determine using GM detector so the correct answer is only counts has to be determined. For detection of gamma rays and its energy information, we, uh, these two informations we can calculate using sodium iodide crystal detector. 
now the limit of external contamination for skin it is 3.7 becquerel per centimeter square 1 microsievert per hour is equal to we can find out this one using the formula 1 sievert is equal to 100 ronjan we all know that 1 sievert is equal to 100 ronjan by using this formula we can calculate the exact answer and the exact answer is 0.1 milli ronjan per hour 10th value thickness for iodine 131 we know 1 TVT is equal to 3.43 HVT that is 1 tenth value thickness is equal to 3.43 half value thickness using this formula we can calculate the tenth value thickness for iodine 131 so the exact answer is 10 mm because the half value thickness for iodine 131 is 3 Now, what is the exposure rate constant for technetium 99M? We all know it is 0.8 ronjan per millicurie per hour at 1 cm. Specific gamma ray constant for P32 is, we all know specific gamma ray constant can be calculated only for the gamma emitters and P32 is not a gamma emitter, it is a beta emitter. So, the specific gamma ray constant for P32 is not defined. So, the exact answer is D, not defined for P32. Now, the next minimum area to be swiped while doing the swipe test for contamination, we all know it is 10 cm ka hall square, that is 100 cm square. So, the exact answer is A, 100 cm square. Now, the 18th contamination limit for the supervised areas supervised areas are the areas in which we have to be very careful about the radiation so the contamination limit is very high that is 10 raised to the power minus 3 micro curie per centimeter square here in all options it is given curie per centimeter square but it is not correct it is micro curie per centimeter square now the limit for alpha contamination on working table is 0.37 becquerel per centimeter square. Option C is correct. Exposure level. Now we have to calculate the exposure level at 80 centimeter from 150 millicuri iodine 131 kept in a lead pod having thickness of 3 centimeter. Now exposure we can calculate intensity we know the formula of intensity that is equal to activity into gamma ray specific gamma ray constant divided by mid distance ka whole square using this formula we can calculate the exact answer and the exact answer is 0 0.0515 ronjan per hour that is option A. Thank you so much guys I hope you will learn a lot using this presentation and you will come to know about a lot. Thank you so much.